Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Ocean County School Counselors Association Virtual College Fair powered by StriveScan. My name is Julian. I'm going to be your facilitator for the evening. Uh, we have six great institutions ready to share um, a lot of great news and great happenings around their college. So I want to just start off with some housekeeping tips. Uh, so how you ask questions, you can use the Q&A chat box at the bottom of your screen. Make sure that you address the college that you want to answer your questions. So we make sure that everything is getting answered in a time, uh, in timely and accordingly um, to the night. Um, you can ask a question to any institution throughout the night at any time. So it doesn't have to be the, uh, just the person that is talking at that specific time. Um, your camera and microphone are off, so you don't have to worry about us seeing you, uh, but you can see us. And if you want to sign up for more sessions, there are two more happening tonight, and the recordings will be available within about a week. If you ever want to come back and get some more information that you think you might have missed, you can do that at strivescan.com slash OCSCA. And then for any other sessions that you would like to possibly sign up for, you can do it at that same website. So we are going to get started with our first institution, the University of Connecticut, and I'm going to allow them to get their screen up and running. But make sure if you have any questions, uh, please put them in the chat box for the evening. All right, so uh, thank you all for being here. Uh, my name is Eric Chittis. I'm one of the admission officers here for the University of Connecticut. Um, I am the New Jersey representative, so I will be the one helping you through the admissions process. I'm definitely your contact person for any questions you have related to UConn. Uh, for those who don't know, UConn, of course, is the main public institution for the state of Connecticut. We have about 24,000 undergraduate students across five different campuses. So we are about a medium sized school, technically speaking. Our main campus is located in a town called Stores. We have about 19,000 undergraduate students there, and we have about 5,000 students across four different regional campuses all throughout Connecticut, mostly for in-state commuting students. There is not a lot of residential options, so what we'll be talking about today mostly will be our campus in Stores. Stores is about a half an hour away from Hartford, which is Connecticut's capital and biggest city, hour and a half from Boston, about two and a half hours from New York City, about three and a half hours or so from you all in New Jersey. So it's a great location that is super well connected to a lot of these bigger areas in the Northeast. Um, in terms of um, that location, it's gonna be really nice both professionally and personally speaking. Professionally being that close to a Hartford, a Boston, New York City leads to a lot of opportunities for internships, for um, alumni to come back, for networking experiences and events. Uh, we see a lot of careers and, and um, you know, jobs out there being that close to, again, to a New York City and Boston, um, but also personally speaking, has a lot of benefits as well. Uh, usually are, we're able to arrange for trips up to Boston, see like a Red Sox game for half off, or to New York City, see like a Broadway show for a discounted price. So a lot of benefits of that location. In terms of what that stores campus looks like, I always describe UConn as a city school that is tucked away in the woods. So you have a lot of the elements of a, a small school in terms of what the campus looks like. It's all one self-contained campus. It's very green, it's very earthy, crunchy. So if you're someone that wants to go to a school that you know physically looks nice all four seasons, our campus for you in stores is gonna be a perfect option for you. At the same time, still a large institution. Uh, when you factor in graduate students, people visiting for the day, faculty and staff, we could get up to 30, 35,000 people. So it does feel like kind of like its own little city. Uh, we have a great downtown area on campus called Downtown Stores with tons of shops, restaurants, and museums uh, and things to do down there. We got an ice rink on campus. A lot of our athletic teams will play around campus. So there's always a lot of things happening there. So it's a very exciting location. Switching gears here to academics, uh, UConn has about 115 majors in 10 different schools and colleges. Our more well-known programs are going to be things like our business programs, our engineering programs, and our nursing programs. That's kind of like, again, our flagship programs. But our most popular individual majors are going to be things like political science, biology, and um, uh, chemistry. So um, that's kind of what we offer, but we also do offer things like um, low arts and sciences. We do education, we do pharmacy, we do agriculture. So whatever you're trying to pursue academically, we can most likely offer. Um, if you have no idea what you want to study, that is perfectly fine. We do have an undecided program. It's called ACES. It stands for Academic Center for Exploratory Students. It's a very popular option. About 900 students come into our undecided track each and every year. So it's about a quarter of our first year class. Essentially, you'll be matched up with your ACES advisor and they will help you figure out which courses you wanna be taking, uh, which majors and programs you're interested in applying to. And we really take it from there. Um, the way UConn structures its curriculum is that you'll have what we call general education requirements, which are certain courses that all students, whether they're business majors, nursing majors, whatever it may be, have to take. Because of those gen ed requirements, your first year, sophomore year, 
as an ACES student, it's going to look pretty similar to that of a business student or a nursing student or whatever it may be. So I know oftentimes students are worried about, you know, taking longer to graduate or they're not going to be able to finish a degree in four years if they come in undecided. Not the case for UConn at all. You'll be taking those general education classes the same way everyone else does. And then from there, you'll pick and choose, um, you know, what major you want to apply to as well. Sticking to academics here, um, average class size is about 28 to 34 students. And our student faculty ratio is about 16 to one. So classes really aren't terribly big. What you'll find is your first year, your sophomore year, again, when you're taking those gen ed classes, they will start out pretty big. But as you progress through your major and start to get to your upper level, you know, animal science classes or whatever it may be, they're going to get a lot smaller, a lot more hands-on. Um, two other things about academics I do want to quickly touch upon is we have these pre-professional programs for students interested in medicine, law, dental medicine, education. They are programs that you can apply into as an incoming first year student. And if you are admitted to these programs, you more or less have a guaranteed admission into our medical school or our law school, just contingent upon your completion of the program. So if you are interested in pre-med, pre law anything like that, we can offer that. And we do have an honors college as well. Uh, no separate application for our honors program. Just apply to UConn on time. You'll be automatically considered for our honors college about 500, 600 students each year. You get to pick courses a little bit earlier, pick your housing a little bit earlier, get to receive more one-on-one -on -one academic advising. So tons of extra benefits, but nothing extra you need to do for the application process. And then wrapping up here about with campus life. So uh, my big thing about UConn here is that whatever you're interested in pursuing, we're going to be able to offer it, but at the same time, still not feel super overwhelming or feel like there's just too much to handle. Uh, we have 700 plus student clubs and organizations. They range really all over the place from political interest to just hobbies to professional development. So Whatever you like to do outside the classroom, we're gonna be able to offer that. We have about uh, 24 different division one sports teams, about 30 different um, club teams, about hundred different annual teams. So whatever you wanna get involved in athletically, we can do as well. 135 education abroad programs, and I believe 50 plus different locations. So whether it's education abroad, whether it's Greek life, whether it's athletics, whatever you wanna do, UConn's going to be a large enough institution where we can offer it, but not so big where it's gonna be overwhelming or competitive or just too much to handle. And then lastly here, just a little bit about the application timeline here. No early action, no early decision. Uh, for us, applications need to be in by January 15th and all decisions will be released around March 1st. We do have a special priority consideration just for honors and just for scholarships if you apply by December 1st, but it's not early action, it's not early decision. So again, applications just need to be in by January 15th and then all decisions are released on March 1st. So thank you so much, uh, thank you so much for being here. Uh, enjoy the rest of your night. All right, thank you, University of Connecticut. Uh, we are gonna start getting ready for University of East Anglia. And while we do, just want to encourage you, if there are any other sessions you wanna check out tonight, you can do so by going back to the StriveScan uh, website where you registered for this one, as well as checking uh, in with the Q&A if you have any questions throughout the night. Thank you very much and welcome. So, sorry, I'm just gonna get rid of the previous slide. So, Hey, hello, my name is Graham Wise. I'm an international officer working for the University of East Anglia or UEA as we're better known here in the UK. So UEA is a campus-based university home to around 16,000 students from about 4,000 different countries. Um, so from about 4,000 international students. So we have a very diverse, a very multicultural um, cohort of students here at UEA, a very welcoming cohort to international students as well. We're also a research intensive university and research is very much embedded into all of our programs at the university. So in terms of our achievements at UEA, um, so we are ranked very highly, not just in the UK, but also in the world as well. Um, so as you can see here, ranked in the top 25 in the UK, but also in the top 200 in the world. So again, a very, um, very highly ranked university to, to come to. The other ranking I'd like to highlight as well is our teaching excellence framework. So this is a initiative introduced by the UK government a few years ago to assess the quality of teaching at UK universities. And it was a gold, silver and bronze award and UEA was one of um, around 20 universities to achieve the gold award a really good recognition of the quality of teaching that takes place at UEA so this is our campus as I said we're a campus-based university so all of our facilities including the accommodation which is guaranteed for students in their first year of study at UEA is located on this same site and we have all the amenities and facilities you'd expect at a modern UK university as well we have our 30 million pound sports park with lots of indoor and outdoor sports, competitive and non-competitive sports students can take part in. We have the street, which is where most of it's the center of our campus, where we have our 24 seven library, shops, um, restaurants, all of those kind of amenities, banks and um, post offices. 
We have our very active student union located in the centre of campus as well. And so we have over 200 different clubs and societies that students can join, ranging from different sports societies to international societies to actually a specific um, society for students from the US. As well as that, we have our medical centre, dentist and other, again, other amenities you'd expect at a UK university. One of our facilities that we like to, to mention at UBA is the Sainsbury Centre for Visual Arts. So this is an art gallery located on our campus, um, which is open to the public as well as students. It's free to enter and there's lots of um, art exhibitions from all over the world. Uh, the Sainsbury Centre, you may recognise the building because it also doubles up as the headquarters of the Avengers. So we've had the Avengers on our campus filming before and hopefully, you know, maybe one day they'll return again. But um, yeah, either way, it's a pretty cool thing. So you may have studied at university, which is also the Avengers headquarters. So in terms of some less interesting things, so in terms of entry requirements at UEA and um, what we look for um, and with our entry requirements, it's very much a bespoke process. So um, typically speaking, we look for the high school graduate diploma and AP exam, so usually around three APs. And um, if you're going into a particular subject science area, for example, um, then we'd look for a background within that science. So if you, you know, if you're applying to chemistry, we'll look for a background within chemistry in one of your APs. Um, it's important to note that some of our courses will require you to take part in an interview, a virtual interview, and all of our applications are made on UCAS. Uh, deadline for that is the 15th of January, um, and that's how you'll, that's the only way to apply to courses at UEA, um, and that's, you know, generally speaking for most of the UK as well, and you'll also be required to submit a personal statement for that. So where we're located, um, so UEA is in the city of Norwich, which is in the east of the UK, and um, to, to let you know where we're located, we're about an hour and a half from London um, by train, about an hour to Cambridge, and we actually have an international airport in Norwich as well. So it's a very well connected city, not just to the rest of the UK, but also to, to the world as well. Um, we're a coastal city as well, so the closest beach to our campus is about 30, 40 minutes away, and we're surrounded by lots of beautiful countryside as well. So again, a really nice and um, welcoming environment for our students. Norwich is really well known for being a, a blend of the old and the new. So you have the historical castles and cathedrals and cobbled streets. Then you also have your brand new shopping centres, cinemas, restaurants, all those kind of amenities as well. So it's really great kind of entertainment and theatre and a really great um, student life in Norwich. It's also a great shopping city. It's also actually known in the UK as one of the safest cities to live in, um, not just for students, but just in, in general life as well. So again, a very popular place. And we often find with our students who come to UEA and come to Norwich, you often find that once they've finished and once they've graduated, they don't want to, to leave the city. So the programmes we offer at UEA are obviously three years in length as, as is the standard for most programmes in the UK. And um, they can be longer if you were to choose a placement or a year abroad option, but they're very flexible programmes in UEA as well. So while you do have to apply for one um, subject, you do have lots of um, choice within that subject to choose modules that really interest you to help you kind of tailor the degree to your own area of interest. And uh, the programmes are very cost effective, ranging from 17 to 21,000 pounds, obviously for three years. So again, it's a, it is a, a you know, much more cost effective way of studying. And you'd expect around 20 hours a week of contact time so by contact time we mean um, workshops and um, lectures seminars all of that kind of stuff and at UEA we're really well known for literature and creative writing in social development and environmental sciences but we're strong in other areas as well like business law and psychology um, so just to touch on a few final bits of information so we have lots of um, generous scholarships for our students from the US so we have an application-based scholarship, um, which is between £4,000 and £8,000 per year of study, as well as a guaranteed scholarship as well. So again, we have a really wide variety of um, offers on offer for you. Accommodation is very cost effective as well at UEA. And like I said, it's guaranteed for you in your first year of study. And it ranges from around 80 to 160 pounds um, per year. As I said, we have lots of different clubs and societies and we are FAFSA accredited as well. So you can get the FAFSA loan. So I think that's pretty much it for me. So yeah, thank you very much for listening. If you do have questions, please feel free to submit them in the chat or alternatively, you can contact me on my email address here. That's g.wise at ueac.uk. And I'll be more than happy to take any emails or questions um, on, on that contact address. Thank you. Awesome, thank you, University of East Anglia. And uh, we're gonna let uh, University of New England start getting set up with screen share. And while we do that, just wanna continue to uh, encourage you to write a question in the Q&A chat box. Make sure that you're addressing the college or institution that you want to answer that question. And you can do that anytime throughout the night. And we'll leave it over to University of New England. 
Good evening, everyone. My name is Seth Selmarak. I know my name says Trevor Faulkner, but I'm sitting in for him tonight. Um, I, the University of New England is located in Biddeford, Maine. I graduated from UNE in 2019, um, and I got a job there quickly thereafter. Uh, what you're looking at now is our Biddeford campus. Uh, it's a very unique campus, mostly because we are right on the water. Uh, we do own about 4,000 feet of water frontage. Uh, our private beach is located towards the middle of the photo there, and the island to the left um, of the jetty there is also ours, uh, mostly for hands-on studying for our marine uh, biology students. Uh, we specialize in marine science as well as health science, but have a ton of liberal arts programs as well. Um, for marine science, we are actually top 10 in the nation for uh, marine science and uh, offshoots of the marine programs. Um, a lot of that has to do with our location, seeing as we are right here. Uh, on the Atlantic Ocean and Saco River and where the two meet. Uh, most of our programs will happen here on the Biddeford campus as uh, it houses the majority of our 2,500 undergraduate students. Uh, we break our campuses up into three different campuses, one in Portland, Maine, one in Biddeford, Maine, and one in Tangier, Morocco. Uh, the Biddeford campus is only about uh, to give people some geographic uh, relative area um, differences. It's about an hour and a half from Boston, um, about two and a half hours from Hartford, Connecticut, um, and about four hours from New York. So if very, uh, very manageable drive for around New England. Uh, we also have one of the smallest airports uh, in the country in Portland, which is also one of the easiest to navigate by all means. If you're interested in being able to get to Maine, you can do that um, in a lot of different ways. Uh, we are located in the southern portion of Maine, uh, and most of our programs as well um, in the health sciences, especially in marine biology, have a ton of networked uh, opportunities for experiential learning while you're here doing your undergraduate work. Our Portland campus is located about 30 minutes north of Biddeford. Uh, and this is our professional campus. So this is for our students in their junior and senior year. So those third and fourth year students that are going to be studying nursing, dental hygiene, or pharmacy. So all of your clinical experiences, as well as any um, lectures that you'll be taking in those last two years will be happening on this campus. Uh, this campus has some pretty awesome hands-on experiences as well that are, that are offered to our students. Um, sorry, as I jump ahead there a little too quickly. Um, but the Portland campus also kind of brings that professional feel and that those hands-on experiences to our students in a way that a lot of places um, do through internships or something of that nature. So as soon as your junior year, you will be uh, doing clinicals if you're a nursing student or working in our community clinic uh, for dental hygiene. So you really will be getting that hands-on experience in your undergraduate program. And that is not limited to the Portland campus. Our programs in Biddeford as well have all of the opportunities for experiential learning and hands-on um, experiences as well. Uh, those range from anything with research in the Atlantic Ocean for marine students to internships with um, national businesses located in Maine, uh, as well as animal science internships and opportunities um, in wolf refuges and salmon hatcheries, as well as uh, different business-based uh, internships for our students too. So at UNE, we're very hands-on, but also global. Uh, and I say global because we do have our own campus in Tangier, Morocco. Uh, this is not a sister school or an affiliate school by any means. Uh, it is quite literally if you picked UNE up and you dropped it on the northern tip of Africa. Um, Tangier, Morocco is on that northern tip, as I just said. Um, but all of our own accredited faculty, staff, and uh, buildings here on campus are ours. Uh, we also offer programs in the south of France, Paris, France, Spain, and Iceland as well. So some sister programs there, um, but a very globally uh, oriented university uh, in a very small town in Maine. Uh, however, we do send students all over the country, or sorry, all over the globe because it, uh, we have the ability to send them to schools as long as our, uh, as long as the classes line up and the curriculums line up with different programs. Um, but we study abroad at five times the national average. And that's, uh, as you can see, all of our programs here are able to be studied abroad. Uh, we actually set up every single one of our majors. So uh, if students are interested in studying abroad, they can do that in a certain semester. 
Uh, as you see, we also have a ton of different um, pre-medical programs. Uh, we have our own dental medicine school, um, medical, medical school, uh, optometry programs, as well as occupational therapy and physical therapy, um, and physician assistant as well. So all of those programs uh, also offer a grad vantage program, which allows students to uh, kind of be accelerated through a pipeline into the medical schools at the University of New England. Um, and we also have an accelerated program for our dental and medical students who are looking to complete uh, both med school and their undergraduate degrees in a matter of uh, seven years. So your first three years in undergraduate would be completing all of your undergraduate requirements. You would take the boards and then move straight into medical school here at UNE, uh, given that pass. But for our students who are un undeclared or undecided, we have the GUST program. Uh, that is our guided undergraduate studies program. Uh, it allows students to be immersed in a different setting of different classes in their first year and allows you to kind of move forward with that, um, finding that right major uh, down the line. We're very hands-on and experiential here at UNE. As you can see, these are some of the research opportunities and clinical settings. Uh, we have about 18 uh, varsity sports and over 90 clubs and organizations. Uh, it's a very awesome university. You can find us here. Uh, we are test blind. Our early action deadline is November 15th. Uh, admissions at UNE.edu. Thanks for listening to me tonight and have a good one. All right. Thank you, University of New England. And we are going to get set up for University of Pittsburgh next. So just want to continue to encourage everyone, if there are any other sessions that you want to check out, make sure you go back to strivescan.com and you can sign up for more at the same link that you registered for this one. Uh, University of Pittsburgh, you have the floor. Hello, thank you. My name is Dana Hassel. I am the New Jersey representative for the University of Pittsburgh, and I will serve as your private admissions counselor through the admissions process with Pitt. I do want to point out a couple of things. First, I'm also an alum, as is my husband and also my daughter, so a lot of blue and gold does run through our household. But a little bit about the city of Pittsburgh itself is it has less than half a million people. So you can navigate all of the um, beauty of the city itself. I don't say that uh, only because I am originally from Pittsburgh as well, but uh, also it gives you an opportunity to take advantage of the uh, amenities that we do have uh, with the city. It is a full-fledged city. I'm sure you've heard of some of our sports teams, but we also have the arts and a uh, number of Fortune 500 companies that have headquarters there. It's very attractive because it's an hour away from Chicago, New York, Philadelphia, Washington, DC. And that comes into play when we're talking about internship possibilities. Uh, with also, we have a number of strong cultural neighborhoods that surround the area, and it gives students an opportunity to may have those connections. Uh, that's something that's very strong for them. Uh, they can also continue those connections within the city of Pittsburgh. We have 90 culturally strong neighborhoods that just blanket the city. Um, city of Pittsburgh is about three miles away from Oakland, where the University of Pittsburgh campus is located. And with your student ID, you do not need a car uh, at the university. We're located about five hours away from New Jersey. It's a nice, pleasant ride. I do it quite often. Uh, and so uh, students have a chance to be away from uh, home uh, without necessarily being too far away. The school itself, we have approximately uh, 30,000 30, students system-wide over all five of our campuses. However, at the Pittsburgh campus, we have about 20,000 students. And Pitt is a, um, an internationally top-ranked research institution, which allows us to uh, be able to offer within our honors college, the Bachelor of Philosophy degree. Um, it's usually an honor that's bestowed on Ivy League institutions. So we're very proud of being able to have that available for those students who wish to pursue the BPhil degree, which also makes you very competitive in terms of research opportunities. And since we are a top-ranked research institution, you are able to take advantage of uh, 
engaging in research as early as your second semester of your freshman year. Um, whether you've done research in the past and you want to continue with whatever you have been working on, or you want to start new with something, we will be able to accommodate you with uh, all of the opportunities that we have available. We also have a guaranteed internship program. Uh, every student who goes through our internship prep program is guaranteed at least one internship before you graduate. Um, also, we have a very vibrant study abroad program with over 350 different sites and over 75 different countries worldwide. We also have guaranteed housing. For the first three years, uh, students will have housing accommodations reserved for them. Uh, fourth year, you can choose to uh, explore one of those wonderful neighborhoods outside of the university uh, grounds, or you can continue to stay on campus if you like. We have what we call living and learning communities where students who have the same cultural, social, academic interests may choose to live together in particular housing settings. Our Honors College has their own dormitory, as does our uh, College of Business uh, Administration. And so uh, pre-med and pre-medical uh, students uh, can also uh, choose to live together uh, as an option to have that outside of the classroom learning experience. We have over 700 different clubs and organizations. And one of the things that you might uh, enjoy playing with on our website and through our Student Affairs uh, website is our um, organizational search. You can put in a keyword and find one of the different organizations that would be of interest to you. Uh, if you don't find uh, an organization that quite meets your uh, needs, you and seven of other uh, seven other students, along with a faculty advisor, can get together and form your own club uh, within the university. And we also have uh, our Division I uh, title for sports uh, for the ACC. Uh, and also our alumni network, in addition to my husband, my daughter, myself, there's more than 300,000 uh, active alumni worldwide to help you with uh, any of your internship uh, or employment needs. We're always looking to help uh, a fellow alum. One of the things that we're also most proud of is that uh, University of Pittsburgh has been uh, ranked again, the number one public university in the Northeast taking into consideration not only our academics and all of the extra opportunities students have through internships and research, but how well the students like being there. And so with that, we are very proud, uh, once again, to be the number one public university in the Northeast. Uh, we have over 100 different majors, minors, and certificate programs for students to choose from. And if you don't quite know, we have a dedicated team of academic advisors to help you find that spark so that you know that you are in the right place with the University of Pittsburgh. Uh, we have uh, one of our unique things is that we are um, top ranked in terms of um, health sciences. We're one of the top 10 schools to study in the health sciences. And we have six teaching hospitals uh, right on our campus that you can take advantage of. We have 14 to one student to faculty ratio. But uh, my favorite thing to point out is our guaranteed admissions programs where we will hold a space in any one of our graduate programs that you see listed here. Um, and with just a few um, uh, minor uh, requirements uh, through your undergraduate, uh, studies, uh, you will have that safety net uh, behind you when you are finished with your undergraduate education. If for some reason you do not want to pursue that, it is not a binding agreement uh, so that you can pursue uh, whatever uh, graduate programs that you would be interested in as well. The only thing that we need to know from you initially when you apply to the university is which one of our first year programs you will be interested in. We have four professional schools in nursing, computer science, engineering, and business, and everything else would fall under our uh, Dietrich School of Arts and Sciences. Uh, we don't have any early action or early decision, but we do have rolling admission, but we have some uh, particular deadlines that students need to take into consideration when they are looking uh, for consideration for honors or our medical school uh, physician's assistant, and just to be eligible for scholarships. It's an easy application process once you've decided which one of 
are five schools uh, that you would be interested in and which location of our campuses uh, that you would like to uh, be considered for. And we also have um, uh, the uh, option of you submitting test scores or not uh, in terms of test optional availability. Uh, we are considered a public four-year public institution and we are very proud to say while we are a large institution, we do like to maintain a personal and approachable um, way for students to reach out. Here is my contact information and uh, we look forward to seeing you at the University of Pittsburgh. Awesome. Thank you so much, University of Pittsburgh. And we are going to start getting uh, the floor over to University of South Florida. Just want to continue to encourage everyone. We have uh, two institutions left and some plenty of time left to answer any questions you might have. And please use that Q&A chat box. And here is University of South Florida. Thank you so much. So good afternoon, everyone. My name is Christy Pugh, and today I'm going to be talking about the University of South Florida. Um, I am the Regional Recruiter Advisor for the Northeast. I work with students primarily in New Jersey, New York, Connecticut, and Rhode Island, and I am actually based out of New Jersey, so I'm not down in sunny Florida right now. But just to give you an overview of the University of South Florida, we are located in the greater Tampa Bay area. So Tampa Bay experiences 246 days of annual sunshine, so it's a really great place to be and we do have a total enrollment of around 50,000 students. So we are a relatively large public research institution, and though we are large, we still maintain an average class size of around 33 students. Um, for diversity, USF really does pride itself on our diversity, with 41.5% of our students coming from diverse backgrounds, and we do have students from all 50 states and 141 different countries. Um, of those 50 states, our biggest out-of-state population is actually going to be New Jersey, so you definitely won't be alone in that regard as well. We do have over 200 majors and concentrations on our campus, so odds are, whatever it is you're looking for, we probably have it on USF's campus. We are America's fastest rising university. We are very proud of this fact. We are now ranked 46 by US News and World Report. And what fastest rising means, it means that if you look at the rankings from 10 years ago compared to now, um, we have risen quite a lot in the rankings in the past 10 years. So we are very proud of that. And it just proves that we are on the right trajectory to make our way to the top. USF is one university geographically distributed. So what that means is that when I say University of South Florida or USF, I'm referring to all three of our campus locations in Tampa, St. Petersburg, and Sarasota Manatee. So when you apply to the university, you will actually get to choose what campus you want. Um, each campus offers something a little bit different, a little bit unique. It really just depends on what you're looking for in a college experience. Uh, think about that and when you're selecting your campus. So Tampa is where lives live larger. It is the biggest of the three campuses. When you think large public university, that's our Tampa campus. It houses a majority of our students, um, our academic majors, as well as our student organization. St. Petersburg is a little bit smaller. Um, it's where city meets sand. It's right on the water. It's a beautiful beach town. So if you're really into you know, outdoor recreation or going to the beaches, this might be the campus for you. Um, our Sarasota Manatee campus is the smallest of the three. It only has a couple thousand students. So if you're looking for that private school feel for a public school price, uh, this might be the campus for you. Um, in regards to student life, um, we have over 700 student organizations on our campus, ranging from Greek life to smaller academic clubs. So you will definitely be able to find your niche on campus. And we do have over a thousand on-campus events each year. Um, so the picture right here is kind of showing our kickoff to the semester. This happens every semester at the beginning. They just get you excited for what's to come. Obviously with COVID, it looks a little bit different, but we're hoping to get back to this soon. And we are at NCAA Division I Athletics. We play in the American Conference um, and all sporting events are free for students to attend. So if you wanna go to a football game in our Raymond James Stadium, um, that's actually the Tampa Bay Buccaneers Stadium, the NFL Stadium where the Super Bowl was, that's also where the Bulls play. So if you wanna go to a game there, that is free for students. If you're interested in playing sports, but not necessarily at a D1 level, we do offer a recreation and intramural sports as well. And then my personal fun fact is that there is a Publix on campus. So if you're not familiar, Publix is a very popular grocery store chain um, in the South, especially in Florida. Um, and it's very convenient for our students to have that uh, basically steps away from their residence hall. 
I'm going to kind of switch gears now and talk about some freshman admissions information. So you could apply to the University of South Florida in three ways. Um, you could apply on the Common App, the Coalition App, or our USF admissions website. It doesn't matter which one you choose, just whatever is easiest for you. Um, and our application is very straightforward. All we need is a $30 application fee, your official high school transcript, and official ACT or SAT test scores, and that's it. Um, we only consider academic credentials, so we don't need any sort of supplemental information. I included our admitted freshman profile on here from last fall, um, just to give you an idea of what the average admitted student, what they had. This is not the requirements for admission, because again, this is the average. There are students above this, there are students below this, but generally we're looking for a GPA around a 4.1, uh, SAT of a 1270, and ACT of a 28. Keep in mind these test scores are super scored, so if you've taken the test multiple multiple times, definitely send us all those scores. And then the GPA is recalculated based on just your core courses. For cost of attendance, you're going to look at that non-resident line since you guys are a non-Florida resident as an out-of-state student. For your tuition and fees, housing and meals, books and supplies, and other, you're looking at around $34,000 for the academic year. And yes, that is a large amount of money, but when you compare that to other out-of-state institutions and even some in-state institution, that rate is extremely competitive. Uh, USF has some of the lowest tuition rates in the country. So tuition and cost of attendance is definitely something to consider um, when you're looking at different universities and colleges because that's gonna be a reoccurring expense for the next four to five years. One of the ways in which you could offset that tuition cost is going to be through scholarships. And we do offer merit scholarships for our out-of-state students. So they are merit-based. Basically, if you have the GPA and you have the test score, and you apply by the deadline, you're automatically going to get the scholarship associated with that GPA and test score. It starts with our Green and Gold Scholars Award with a 3.5 and a 1210 at 6,000 per year, and then it goes up with our Director and Presidential Award. Um, you can see that it has the yearly award amount on there, but also the four-year award amount since this is, uh, you can maintain it all four years. Winding down now with some dates and deadlines, July 1, that's when our application opens, and you want to make sure you apply by January 1, uh, that's our priority application deadline, and that just gives you your best chance of admissions. If you don't meet that January 1 deadline, no worries, you do have until February 15th to apply and still be um, in consideration for those admission scholarships. And then May 1, last day to tell us if you want to be a bull, join the bulls family. And that is everything I wanted to talk to you guys about tonight. So thank you so much for listening to me. This is my contact information and I'll also put it in the chat, uh, but thank you again and go Bulls. All right, thank you University of South Florida. And last but not least, we are gonna leave the floor over to uh, Ursinus College. Uh, they are going to get their screen share set up. And since this, this is the last institution, just wanted to encourage those questions to come through. Um, and if you want to sign up for any other sessions, you may do so as well. All right, so some pretty, pretty big names and colleges to follow there. So I'll try to do my best to everybody out there. But <clears throat> thank you so much for joining us tonight. I appreciate it. We all appreciate it. My name is Douglas Solrick. I am one of the senior assistant directors here at Ursinus College. And you can see sometimes we get a little confusion on how to pronounce the name. So we, we typed it out there for you. But Ursinus College, jumping right into it, being cognizant of everybody's time tonight, is located in right around the Philadelphia area. We're about 25 miles northwest from Philadelphia. It's about a 45 minute to an hour drive, depending on traffic. So not terribly far from, from any location in New Jersey. I know for me, depending on where we're at, it takes anywhere from an hour and a half to two and a half hours to get up and down the great state of New Jersey. We're also one of 44 colleges that change lives or the CTCLs it's better known as. So think about it on the East Coast. There's a lot of really great schools, right? There's a lot of schools that maybe we've seen some of them playing in March Madness this year. And that's the school that we think, wow, that's where I need to go. That's where I need to be. But we forget about all these other great schools that are in the area that offer that transformative education that might match up a little bit better with what you're looking for. So the CTCL was written back, well, it was created initially as a book 
back in the early 2000s, and we have been in every single edition and iteration of that book. It has been as little as, I think, 33 colleges and as most as 45 or 46. So we're very proud of that, but a big reason for that is because of the academic standards. We are, we're also part of the Phi Beta Kappa Honor Society, which is the nation's oldest and most revered honor society within the country. Only about 10% of institutions across the country are able to have that distinction, and we are one of them. So Bouncing down to that second row very quickly, these are just some, some of the academics that our students are going into that we've seen over the last few years. Biology, applied economics slash business, health and exercise physiology, psychology and media and communication studies are kind of our top five. And I'm sure you're thinking to yourself, well, maybe I don't see my major. That's perfectly fine. Our sinus is a top 100 nationally ranked liberal arts institution. Again, we're one of 44 colleges that changed lives. We have that Phi Theta Kappa Honor Society distinction. That, so you guys know that no matter what program, program you go into, it's gonna be held to the same academic standard. And we really wanna encourage you guys to do as much as you possibly can from academics and activities, but we do offer over 60 courses of study here. It's about 30 majors, 30 minors, and about 80% of our students are going to either double major or attach a minor to their major program of study. So again, we really want you guys to follow your passions. And I always use this example because I think it's the most extreme, but it's an accurate representation of an our sinus student. We have many students who wanna come in and they wanna go for pre-med. A lot of our students go off for their MD or their DO. So they wanna come in and they wanna join our biology or participate or major in biology. But then they also have dance as a background. So they want to do performing arts. So they will either double major or attach that minor to biology. So again, we, we really encourage you guys to do as much as you can here at Ursinus. And we've built this curriculum around the type of Ursinus student that is successful here. And it's called the Ursinus Quest or the Common Intellectual Experience. And you'll notice down at the bottom of the page, we do have four questions that we introduce you to beginning in your freshman year. It's what should matter to me? How should we live together? How can we understand the world? And what will I do? Pretty big questions, right? We don't anticipate anybody to have the answers to those questions immediately. But what they're there for is to really build this dialogue-based education that we're preparing you for. Because when you get into the classroom, not everybody's going to have the same view, not everybody's going to have the same background, not everybody's gonna have the same beliefs. And big shocker, that's how the real world works. So everybody has to come together collectively, speak to their, their peers, speak to their professors, challenge each other and also be challenged because that's what you can come to expect once you receive that piece of paper that says bachelor's degree or diploma. Because when you get out there, you're going to have to work coll collaboratively to come up with pretty common solutions to relatively complex problems. So again, we wanna introduce you to that from your freshman year. So we've talked about the academics a little bit. We're gonna kind of uh, talk about how, how do we make this possible, right? Well, if you guys want more information on the application process, I'll drop that in below, but due to time, I'm gonna hold off on that. But 99% of our students do receive some sort of financial aid, mostly in the form of a merit-based scholarship. With that, every single student that is admitted to our sinus will receive a merit-based scholarship that ranges between $21,000 to $40,000. On top of that, there are specialty scholarships for students who are already doing some amazing things. Maybe it's community service, maybe it's volunteerism, maybe it's leadership aspects. So that will range between five to $10,000 and that can be stacked on top of your merit-based award. So we try to be as generous as we possibly can. So covering the academics, what about on campus? You guys will notice that about 94% of our students do live on campus. We do have four-year housing requirement and a four-year housing guarantee. And there's about 36 different residency options here on campus from your traditional freshman style living where it's doubles and triples to suite style living to apartment complexes. And then also uh, we, what we have is Victorian style houses across the street that we've bought and it's part of now our main property, but it's some of them are utilized for special interests. So I believe it was the University of Pittsburgh who was saying that as well with certain houses that could be geared towards you know, a, a certain interest. Maybe it's a video game house, maybe it's a foodie house whatever it may be. You just wanna kind of live in the same house with people who you're sharing a common interest with. So moving along even further about the activities that take place here at Ur Sinus, we are part of the NCAA Division Three. We participate in the Centennial Conference, which I will say is gifted academically, but also athletically. So we like to compete in and out of the classroom and on and off the field. So about 35% of our students are varsity athletes, and that usually encourages another 30% of our students to participate in club or intramural sports. Not, not to sound too funny, as I have it on, on my polo right here, but a lot of people take pride in wearing that UC or that bear on their chest. But maybe athletics isn't for you, or maybe you just want to participate from, from the stadium seats or whatever it may be. 
there's plenty to do here on this campus. There's over 100 clubs and activities and there truly is something for everybody, but much like the other institutions, if there's a club that you want and we don't have it, it only takes you and a small group of students to start a club. But there's a small, small sampling, as you will see, whether it's Greek life, acapella groups, community service, cultural clubs, and, and anything that you could possibly think of. Wrapping all of that up to, to kind of what does all of this mean, it leads to a successful outcome. You can see right there that just about 95% of our students are working within their career field within six months after graduation or working in some sort of service year or enrolled in graduate school. And a big reason for that is that very last thing down at the bottom where it says 100% of our students are participating in the XLP. You are required to do one of six experiential learning projects before you graduate. It's either an internship, research opportunity, creative project, community service, student teaching or a study abroad trip because we don't want you just to understand the practice that's going on or the, the theory that's going on in the textbook. We want you to be practical with that. So we don't want you to graduate after four years and go, well, now it's time to figure those things out. We want you to figure that out throughout your four years here at Ursinus. So if you guys would like to visit, we are open on campus. You can click that link of ursinus.edu slash visit, but I will also put my information in the chat box below. So thank you guys. All right, thank you everyone. And because we are at that time, I just want to uh, give you a few uh, notes before you leave. So again, just thank you for joining. Again, if you want to go to any other sessions, you can do so uh, by going to strivescan.com and signing up for more sessions there. And there's gonna be a quick survey after you close this window, four question survey will appear. Again, sign up for more sessions. And if you want to look back on this recording at any time, you can do so at strivescan.com slash OCSCA. Thank you and good luck on your college search.